There's a new report out released yesterday on the New Zealand China Council website that shows that trade patterns commissioned uh, by the New Zealand China Council uh, have shown that there's data that New Zealand's export and input exposure uh, at a country level is, uh, of course, something that we should be keeping an eye on. The report is intended to be a fact base for the debate about New Zealand's economic reliance on China. The report shows China took 24 0.2% of New Zealand's goods exported in 2018, higher than the global average, but not unusually high compared to other APEC economies such as Australia, 34.7%. Joining us now is Sir Don McKinnon, Chair of the New Zealand China Council. Good evening, sir. Good evening to you. Thank you for taking the time to join <clears throat> us. Now, uh, of course, as I said there earlier in the show, the reason for asking you to come on Sarah's Country is the nervousness happening uh, around the country in our export uh, sector, around the value systems of this extradition treaty. Are our trade agreements solid? Well, I think so. But I would, I would begin by saying that 62 years ago, when I was a shepherd in the wire wrapper, I had a design on buying a huge high country station too. So somehow I got diverted away from that and into the area that I got into now. But look, one thing you learn about the New Zealand farmers, they are incredibly resilient. And probably more importantly, they do move with the market, which in many countries, farmers get kind of stuck politically often their own wish in one little spectrum of activity and then can't break out of it because the political cost of getting out of it is too high for whomever is in government. So we've always moved with the times. We've moved with the markets. The markets are now telling us that, you know, with more than 24% of our exports going to China, it's a market that you must take very seriously. You must take it seriously because China is an economic superpower. And the, probably the interesting side effect of all this is that when we are, or some people in this country are preaching that we should eat less red meat or reduce our animal fat consumption, the opposite is happening in China. The consumption of pizzas is going through the ceiling with dairy food being produced by New Zealand. And of course, they cannot get enough red meat. So look, we will adapt to those markets. How much is too much in the Chinese market? It's a very hard one to call. But I often quote the situation of Canada. 91% of Canada's exports go to the United States. That, to me, is a high reliance on a single market. Now, the United States is big, Canada's big. It's not quite the same as a small island state or small island states like New Zealand. But you do want your exporters to feel free to go where they are best to go, not feel that they are producing too much in one market. Yeah, and we're certainly, we're talking about this because New Zealand has suspended its, its uh, existing extradition treaty with Hong Kong over what is happening from a human welfare perspective. And I know uh, certain commentators like Stephen Jacoby are saying we do need to stand strong on what we value uh, as a country. How do we balance that, Don? Well, look, we've always made it very clear to the Chinese, and I have one time as foreign minister currently as the chair of the China Council, what our values are. Now, we don't just stamp our feet and, and kick in the windscreen or anything like that. We just say, these are our values. And now that you, China, have encompassed uh, Hong Kong to a greater degree in the field of law, which our legislators believe is outside the 1998 agreement, therefore, it becomes difficult for us to adhere to that extradition agreement. Now, look, history shows, I think we've only tried to extradite four people from China as a country. I'm not sure they've asked for anyone to be extradited from New Zealand. Mm, okay. And, and we're talking about the reliance of our markets on China. There's certain uh, product categories that are certainly a lot more reliant uh, than others. You, you mentioned the red meat, but we saw there with COVID, I mean, the, the lobster market took a real hit as well as the venison market as well. Lobster market has taken a hit, honey's taken a hit, and I think there's a couple of 
couple of others that have uh, seafood, I think, has gone down. But we're not talking about a huge collapse. It's, it, it's often just a market readjustment until things get back into. After when you're dealing with lobsters and such things, they are they've got to be fresh. Hmm. So sometimes there's quite a lag between when you can't do anything until you actually get the next load on the aircraft to get to China. What is it like, and uh, of course the current uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, Deputy Prime Minister Winston Peters, is certainly feeling this pressure of maintaining a balance in relationships with allies such as the United States when they're at uh, detention with China? Well, you know, we do have an incredible amount of experience as a small country dealing with delicate situations with large countries. We had 50 years of it dealing with either the United Kingdom or later the European Union. These were giants by compared with us, but you just have to be relentless and don't deviate from your core values. Make it very clear what you're trying to achieve. Don't create a whole bunch of surprises. Don't give them a fright. And to some extent, I think our history of negotiation, which is really quite considerable because, you know, when you trade with 160 countries around the world, you've got to have good trade negotiators, and we have, but all the time ensure that you're not upsetting them in any unnecessary way. Mm -mm. Continuing on trade, I would love to get your thoughts around these current trade deals with the uh, E. UK post-Brexit and uh, the European Union. What's your thoughts on how they're playing uh, their tactics at the moment? Well, I'm not sure the UK really knows where it's going, having established the Brexit, but not having finalised the detail, and then trying to establish free trade agreements. And you probably know that they, they, they've taken or borrowed trade negotiators from New Zealand who are otherwise retired because they didn't have any of their own. They let all their trade negotiations be done from Brussels. So they're playing catch up. If I could say it in a, a simple phrase on trade negotiations, the British are still clearing their throat. Mm. Uh, and Don, I'd like to take the opportunity to pick up on something that you said uh, early on with regards to farming and uh, navigating your business decisions, uh, you know, pan-government post-September, whoever is in. What would be your sort of advice to the farming industry at the moment of what the future could look like that's apolitical? Well, you've got to make sure you've got a whole bunch of what, probably 300 political candidates running around the country all the time now. Make sure your own candidates in your own area know exactly what you, the farming community, are thinking about. What are the real problem areas you foresee? And don't exaggerate it because they get very professional advice ultimately on, on what the issue is. But make it very clear. Farmers have, by and large, gone along with the clean, green country, but they know it costs money every time they fence off a, a dam or fence off a creek, uh, but they are getting there. And the main thing is they are moving in the right direction. It may not be at the speed that many, uh, many people would like it to happen, but look, you're never going to satisfy everybody as long as you are doing your best given the circumstances. Mm -mm. Yeah, no, great advice. Thank you so much, uh, Don McKinnon, Chair of the New Zealand China Council. And while I've got you there, Don, you did you did leak out that uh, you might you know, be interested in lining up for a high country station. But um, I, I've got to ask you, in terms of uh, your music taste, I was mentioning Dolly Parton there before. Are you a, a bit of a Dolly fan? I was always more of a Whitney Houston fan. Oh. She was my favourite. Oh, isn't she? And will go down in history as one of the greatest voices of all time. She was. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Sir Don McKinnon, Chair of the New Zealand China Council. And, of course, uh, New Zealand's uh, ex sort of suspension of our extradition treaty is what is leading to some fears around how solid our trade agreements are with our largest trading partner, China. This is Sarah's Country.